This video is sponsored by Fictive, your partner for custom manufactured parts done right. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight's going to be a little bit of a part two to the sequential printing video we did a couple of weeks ago. So part two is really going to be in relationship to how you set up your printer to identify what your extruder dimensions are to avoid any potential uh, collisions and how it can help you automatically arrange parts on the build plate uh, so that it prints them in the correct order uh, while avoiding crashes and, you know, catastrophes type of thing. So this was from a comment on uh, on that sequential printing video, which I will uh, link at the end of this one. So if you, just in case you haven't watched it, you don't have to go, you don't have to leave just yet. You can leave at the end and go look at it if you need to. But this should this should hopefully cover and kind of like a, be a, a part two... Uh, and cover a lot of the stuff that was in the, the original one too. So here's what you do. It's, it's actually pretty simple. Whether you've got a core XY machine, right? Where the, like a bamboo, like an X1 or a P1P where the bed, right? Where the bed is basically just moving on the up and down in the, in the Z, right? In the Z axis. Uh, or if you've got something like a, an Ender 3 or a CR10 or, you know, one of the like, where you've got a bed slinger that moves back and forth on the Y, and the extruder moves, um, you know, back and forth on the X and then collectively up on the Z, right? So this will work in either, either scenario. Uh, and here's how you set it up. It's pretty simple. So you come up here to the printer section over here. Uh, you use the click to edit presets button. Make sure you're on the basic information tab here. And down here, um, you know, towards the bottom -ish of the screen, you should have this extruder clearances section. You've got three things that you need to put into it. And here's, here's what it means. Um, cause it's, it can be a little bit confusing, but if you mouse over it, you get a little bit of help, right? So the clearance radius around the extruder and then the help documentation, which I'll also link down below. It really just comes from the bamboo labs, uh, wiki page, right? So, uh, Orca doesn't have like its own, doesn't seem to have its own like help documentation, at least not much of it. Everything links back out to the bamboo wiki page as far as how to set it up. So it, this is pretty simple radius around your extruder. You've got your nozzle. It wants to know the radius. Um, of the nozzle that uh, that will accommodate the full size of your extruder in the X and Y position, right? So in my case, I've got my Ender 3s. They're modified though with direct drives, um, sort of non-stock. And so you need to make sure you're also accounting for like if you've got some some big part cooling fang that you've printed or whatever uh, hanging on to this thing, you need to make sure you account for that stuff too. Everything at least that's hanging below your X gantry in this case, in the uh, if you're using a uh, uh, you know, an old bed sling or like a, uh, an Ender 3 or something. <clears throat> so in my case, when I measure from the tip of the nozzle out to one of the extreme ends of the extruder, mine was about 45, 46 millimeters. And I put in a little bit buffer at 47. So, uh, take heed, right? So I would not necessarily use my dimensions here, my measurements, they may not be the same as yours. So if you do use mine <clears throat> and you've got something, something, uh, big and burly on this, uh, you could have problems. The height to the rod. So in the Z equals zero position, it wants to know the distance of the nozzle tip to the lower rod. So in this case, if we pull up a picture of, a, of an Ender 3, this can be a CR10 or whatever, right? Because basically it's, it's all the same function. It wants to know the distance from the very bottom tip of this up to the bottom of your X gantry here. So in my case, again, I think it was like 34, 35 millimeters. I gave a little bit of buffer um, and told it 36. And then the height to lid, you know, so this is where in this case, when you've got a bed slinger and not a core XY machine, um, you need to be a little bit tricky. So really what it needs here is the total height, your total printable height. So it knows how, you know, in this case of a core XY, it needs to know how far the bed's going to come down, right? To understand what your total height is. In this case, right, your, your, your Z is going up away from the bed, right? In the positive direction of Z versus a negative direction of Z. Anyway, it needs to understand what the total height to the lid is in this case. This may not be like a million percent accurate if you're setting up a Core XY machine, but this is how I've gotten it to work on my machine and print print odd-shaped size stuff sequentially. So this is what I've done. Max build volume in my Ender 3 is 250 millimeters. So that's those are the three things that I've put in. Again, feel free to use mine if you like. Uh, I would just go ahead and double check though your stuff um, and just, you know, if, if you've got something wackadoodle here that's way off, then you could potentially run into problems. So once you're done with that, you go ahead and hit save. Um, and you can save as, or you can just save over your current. I'm going to save over my current because this is these are the measurements I just want as part of my machine going forward. 
So now that that is set up, um, the next step is pretty, pretty easy. Um, before we jump into that, I do want to um, have a word or <laughs> get a word with our sponsor. Let's talk about our sponsor for a second. We'll be right back. Do you have parts you need to make that are outside of your current capabilities? Or are you finally ready to level up that part that you've been making in your garage and you need a fast and reliable manufacturing partner? Then you need to consider using Fictive. Fictive has a super easy process to upload and quote your parts. Whether you need CNC machining, 3D printing, urethane casting, even injection molding. When you use Fictive, you get access to a global partner network, super fast cycle times, guided expertise all along your journey, and consistent quality. You can even track the status of your production, including photos of your parts, inspection data, all directly through the Fictive platform. Use the link and the code below in the description for a discount off your first order, and it helps out the channel if you do so. Okay, welcome back. So here we're doing this. Um, so now the next thing you can do is add your parts. Um, but before we do that, we want to be down here in our processes tab over here on the others. Um, this is where we'll set down in the special mode, the print sequence. Now the default is by layer, right? You got one thing on the bed and it prints it by layer. If you have two things on the bed, it's going to print everything layer by layer going up, not one at a time. In this case, what we want to do is change this to by object. So if you have multiple objects on the printer, you want to print them one object at a time in this case. And that is what this signifies you doing. Now you can see it drops in these purpley blue lines in here that represents the dimensions that we put in uh, for, you know, some constraints on the machine to help with collisions and things like that. Right. But it's basically given you a visual representation of that total build volume and all that good stuff. Now, if we start dropping parts in here, so if you've got a bunch of small parts, and they're all the same. So let's say you're saying you got a bunch of small parts and you're just printing a bunch of the same. Um, this is a pretty uh, control C, control V, pretty easy thing to do. I'm going to drop in six of these here. And you can see, hey, uh, these things are too close together, dude. You got to spread some things out. So you can now say we have a silhouette rolling over the top. And that is the radius that you've specified, in my case, 47 millimeters. Um, that's the, the, the clearance of the radius you need. So you can manually sort of throw these things around if you want to, um, and then until the errors go away, or you can simply right click and say arrange. The auto arrange feature now takes into account that, oh, okay, I've got this set now to print by object, uh, and uh, Mark's asking me to lay this thing out so I don't crash. So this is what it's done. It's laid them out in this, in, in this particular, um, in these locations, let's go ahead and slice the plate, and we can for sure see that they are printing one at a time, no problem, right? So Front left at the home is printing that one first, second, third, and just working its way essentially around the bed in that shape. That is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, nothing here is over that 36 millimeter distance, right? So if this was in the Z position down here, right, in your home position, Z equals zero, sorry, in your home position, none of those are going to come close to, to touching this thing. So it can, I really could kind of print this. I, did, I don't really need it in this case. Where it does come in handy is when you have odd shaped size stuff and that if you're not printing multiples of the exact same part is where things can get a little bit tricky and where the, those measurements really come into play. So if we go ahead and right click and add a primitive here and say a cube, right? Now this cube, let's go ahead and make sure it is scaled up. So I'm gonna hit the scale button. I'm gonna scale this up to something bigger than the 36 millimeters, right? And then we're going to right click anywhere and auto arrange again. Let's see where it puts it. So let's put it in the back. So now what it should do is basically print that guy last. So we slice plate and come on down here. You can see for sure. If I roll this thing up, it is now printing the tallest thing last, right? So it's accounting for the multiple sizes and essentially just printing that one last. Now let's do uh, a different scenario where we're actually placing three objects all greater than the 36 millimeters of the uh, the gantry height between the tip of the nozzle and see how it lays them out and how it's going to handle that situation um, using the auto range. So if we go back to prepare, let's go ahead and just delete all. Let's add another primitive. We're going to do another cube. Um, and then we're gonna basically going to copy and paste this three times. So we're just going to sort of randomly move these things around. I'm going to make this one we're going to roll him up to, let's just call it 40. Let's make this one. We're going to make this one 60. And let's go ahead and pull this one in and make him all the way up to 150. So now we've got three distinct shapes here. It's telling me hey, everything's too close, dude. Things are going to, um, 
something's going to break. So if you right click and arrange again, now you can see it now how it has arranged it. Um, it is still taking into account all of the, the radius for your clearance and it's placing them across the Y axis from front to back and it should be printing them front to back as it goes. So there's no, no potential collisions that are going to happen here. So if we slice this plate and come up and down here, you can see that one's printing last, right? Short one first, then medium, then large. Uh, this is going to take forever. I'm just going to roll this up. There we go. So that is how you can accommodate for it. You know, if you, <laughs> you're going to run into particular scenarios. So if you duplicate all three of these and put them right next to each other. So again, if we, if we go like this and let's just say we, if I hold the control key and get them all and do a copy paste, right. And I try and even if I spread these things out, move them around. Everything's too tall. Collisions are going to be caused. It's going to throw errors all over the place. If we even if we right click and auto arrange here, it's going to throw some of the stuff off. Right? There's no way. There's you know you you essentially you, if you've got tall stuff greater than that X gantry height between the nozzle and the bottom of your X gantry, you're going to have potential collision issues. So it's going to do its best to arrange it to avoid any of that stuff, and that could potentially mean it's throwing literally throwing stuff off your plate, just yeeting it out of there. So. Um, just to be aware, right? That there's there's nothing, there's no way that this scenario happens in printing uh, if you're going to print sequentially. If you have to have this layout, you would want to turn this off and just do it by layer, right? All collisions go away, whatever. Everything gets printed at the same time, layer by layer. And that is how you would do this particular thing. So again, you have the option to do it by object, but you need to make sure you're taking into account. So you just need to be aware if you're going to be printing if you need like this particular layout uh, and you're trying to print sequentially, this particular scenario won't probably won't work for you. And you're going to have to be finicky with the software in order to get it to work right. So that's, that's the scenario that you're going to want to go through when you're printing out like this. Again, if you have a bunch of smallish parts that are all below that sort of, that, that sort of that, that tip to the bottom of your X gantry is kind of key because if there's anything that's taller than that, you can still print sequentially. No problem. You can print by layer. No problem. Right. The, the benefit of it is, is that you have less travel. You're printing each part individually before they go. So you reduce the amount of stringing, potential stringing that happens, any bits and blobs. Everything's being contained and just moving on. So it's beneficial to me, like in that small part uh, that I showed you, because when I print this, you know, each one of them only takes maybe 10 or 11 minutes to print each, something less than that even sometimes. Uh, so I'm not going to run back and forth to the printer every 10 minutes. It's sort of a waste of my time. So I'm going to print out a batch of them, six, seven, or eight of them at a time, come back in an hour or so, scrape them all off and start it again. So, <clears throat> but that is, that is the key to how to do it. Um, again, we'll just recap, edit presets, basic machine info, come on down to the six true clearance. I've noticed this is a bit of a bug, like a GUI bug where now things are getting cut off. So I've noticed if I just close this, come back, uh, maybe click around and get out of it, but this is not. There we go. A uh, little bit of a bug. So this is potentially fixed in the next release, which is 1.7.0, which we'll be doing shortly because there are a couple of really cool features in there that I run it, that I want to talk about. But for now, that's how you set up your extruder so that you can avoid collisions and and take advantage of the auto arrange feature and let the let the Orca slicing bamboo studio whatever the Prusa slicer whoever you want to. Um, uh, give credit to it for, uh, to, uh, auto arrange things to avoid any potential catastrophes. So there you go, everybody. Uh, I hope that helps a lot and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Don't forget to like, and subscribe. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that button and don't forget to visit our sponsor fictive. Use the link uh, below and the code Fisher3D at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Thanks a lot.